And Abraham said, Seven ewe lambs of the flock by themselves. And Abimelech said unto Abraham, What mean these seven ewe lambs which thou hast set by themselves? Verse 30, And he said, For these seven ewe lambs shalt thou take of my hand, that they may be witness unto me that I have digged this well. That's what I want to preach to us for the next few minutes tonight. I have digged this well. I have digged this well. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated in Jesus' name. I want to highlight here on the scripture that Abraham, amen, we won't go into his backstory, but you understand that God called him out of the uh, land of his family and called him to separate himself from his family and go into a land which the Lord would show him. Abraham's life was continually one where he walked by faith and not by sight. He was dependent. He was trusting in God. Abraham was not a perfect man. Amen. On more than one occasion, Abraham decided to save his own skin when he got a little bit nervous around uh, uh, some people he thought that uh, did not fear God. And he turned to Sarai and he says, tell them you're my sister, right. which was truth. She was his half-sister. But, you know, a half-truth is, is still a whole lie. Amen. Right. Amen. And so Abraham was not a perfect man, but you see throughout the scriptures God working and developing him to the man that he desires him to be. And you find throughout Abraham's life he built altars and he called upon the name of the Lord. And he had a prayer life and he had a walk with God. Amen. And, he, and, and you have to understand that in that day and age they didn't have bottled water like you and I had. That when they needed water, they had to go somewhere and they had to dig a well. And it was arduous. It was labor intensive. It was not easy. There was some effort. There was some dedication put into it to dig this well so that they could get to the water that they needed to live another day. And the Bible tells us here that there was some adversity in Abraham's experience in building and digging these wells. Time and time again, he ran into conflict and adversity where some other people tried to steal away and take away his well-digging experience. Can I tell us here tonight that digging a well is very closely resembling to a prayer life for you and me here today. And it's something that we have to cultivate individually. It's something we have to dig out for ourselves. It's labor intensive. It's arduous. It's not always comfortable and it's not always convenient. And there will be distractions and there will be adversities and there will be those that come in and try to steal away our well digging experience. But if we want the joy, a man that's down in there at the bottom of the well, we've got to keep digging. And we've got to be persistent. And we've got to make up our mind. I say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So Genesis chapter 26 and verse 18, we're reading about Isaac, the son of promise here. And the Bible says in verse number 18, and Isaac digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham, his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham, and he called them after he called their names after the name which his father had called them. Amen. Young people, don't be so quick to discount or write off or denounce, amen, the wells that your praying mommy and your praying daddy have dug, amen. that your pastor has dug, that those who've come before have dug. We may say it's a little outdated, it's a little irrelevant to today's culture, but can I tell you what? A well is a well, and water is water, and we still got to have it, friend. Yeah. Amen. Don't 
don't be so quick to just discount everything and say, well, I don't see the need in all of that anymore. Isaac went to where the enemy had filled in the wells of Abraham and Isaac began to dig them out again. He said, there's some water down in there. I remember what it was like growing up in church. And, amen. And I remember the presence and the power of God moving in the services. Yes. People laid out drunk in the floor. Amen. God doing miraculous yes. things. Can I tell you what? Those days are not just days gone by. Those are days are right here and right now. All we've got to do is say, you know what? I'm going to dig me a well. I'm not going to call us something new. Daddy's prayer life 
isn't going to be enough. You and I and everybody have got to learn to pray for ourselves. We've got to learn to call on God for ourselves. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus begins to tell us about the end days. Amen. When he separates the sheep from the goats. And the funny thing is, if you look at the scripture, the way that the scripture is worded there, these people, they, you know, they were religious. They believed in God. As a matter of fact, they said, hey, we cast out devils in your name. In your name, we've done all these wonderful, mighty works. And he looked at them and he said, depart from me. I never knew you. I never knew you. It's not enough just to know about God. I want to know his heartbeat. I want to know, amen, his will for my life day after day after day. I want to abide in him. And I want to cling to him because you see, he's the vine. I'm just a wild olive branch that's been grafted in. Hey Amen. I'm only here because of his grace and his mercy. Hey Amen. But if I will learn to pray, if I will learn to get a hold of him, if I'll dig me out a well and I'll be consistent about it, hey Amen. I can hear the voice of God giving me direction for my life. Somebody say, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Some people in the world we live in today, they look at you crazy when you say, I've heard from God. But Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. You got to be close enough to the shepherd to hear him when he's talking. He's not always going to shout from the rooftops. Sometimes he comes in a still small voice. And if you're close enough to him to hear him, amen, you can get some guidance and instruction and direction for your life. Amen. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Amen. I believe that if we're close enough to Jesus, he can say, I don't want you going that way. I want you going that way. And I may say, well, why, God? That doesn't make any sense. But we walk by faith and we're not by sight. We've got to have faith and confidence in him for every area of our life. Prayer is the key that unlocks the door to any miracle. Prayer is the key, amen, that unlocks, amen, the windows of heaven in our lives. God desires to do so much for us. He desires to give us so much if we would pray. Amen, if we would pray. I don't stand here before you tonight as somebody that always has this together. Amen. Things, they fight for our time. They fight for our attention. There's so many distractions and the busyness of life. Amen. There's so much to do, so many places to be, so many things we've got to take care of and do. Amen. But above all of these things, the most important thing is that I follow my face somewhere. Amen. And I call on the name of the Lord. And I call on the name of Jesus. Amen. And I begin to pray. And I begin to talk to heaven. Amen. And it's not very long that the Holy Ghost sweeps in. And he begins to commune with me. Amen. Can you lift your hands to the Lord right now? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm going to skip down to verse 25. And talking about Isaac, and the Bible says that he followed in his father's footsteps here. Mamas and daddies, we've got an obligation to set forth the example for our children. They've got to hear us praying. Amen. They've got to see us praying. We can't just talk about it, but they need to hear mama and daddy praying at home. They need to see us praying. Amen. When things fall apart, they need to see us pray. When everything's going right, they need to see us pray. They need to see us set the example of digging a well. Amen. Of getting a hold of God. Amen. They need to see that if they're ever going to mirror that in their life. The Bible says, Genesis 26 and verse 25, and he built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord. Oh God, I want my children 
amen, to be prayer warriors. God, I want Ethan and Elizabeth to know how to call on the name of the Lord. I want them to know, amen, how to go to an altar and pray, amen, and not just go through the motions, amen, but to get the literal attention of all of heaven and all of hell. That when they begin to call on the name that is above every other name, amen, that the Holy Ghost begins to move, amen, that whatever they bind on earth can be bound in heaven. Whatever they loose on earth can be loose in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say pray. 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 Amen. Digging a well in the days of Abraham and Isaac was vital to their survival. Amen. They had to have water to drink. They had to have water to live and to survive. Water was going to sustain them day after day after day. Can I tell us that prayer is going to sustain us day after day Amen. after day. Amen. They say that you can go several days without food and you'll be all right. You might lose a few pounds, might feel a little famished, a little bit hungry, but you'll still be all right. But you go more than three days without water, they say that you're going to die. Water is vital to your survival. Can I tell you that any Holy Ghost filled Christian ought to know prayer is vital to our survival. We gotta keep going back to the well that we dug down for another drink. We gotta keep going back for another touch of the Holy Ghost in our lives. It is that important to our survival and to revival. We say we want revival, but so many times we're not willing to pay the price. See, revival is not a series of special services and maybe a guest speaker. Revival is getting a renewed interest in the things of God. Amen. It's bringing back to life those things that have become dormant or dead. Revival is when people say, you know what? I'm going to give myself to prayer. I'm going to dig me a well. I'm going to give myself to seek in the face of God. I want to be on fire. I want to live for God with all of my heart, mind, soul, and strength. I need a fresh anointing on my life. Come on. Without prayer, amen, we're just like any other church on the block. Without prayer, Amen. We can come together. We can sing some songs. We can have nice programs. Amen. But without prayer, friend, there is no anointing. But it's only the anointing that can break the yoke. It's only the anointing that can break chains and shackles in right. people's lives. Right. But it does not come for free. It's not automatic. Amen. It's something that we've got to labor for. It's something we've got to work for. We've got to get down in the trenches and dig. And we've got to dig. And we've got to dig. Hallelujah. I thank God that I was allowed to be raised in the apostolic church all my life. Amen. I was drugged. My mama drugged me to church every time the doors were open. <laughs> there wasn't any of this. Mom, I don't want to go to church today. We were having church. I went to church. Yeah. That was a legit. There was none of this. Well, I don't want to hurt your self esteem, son. So you tell me what you would like to do. I mean, that crazy nonsense. Right. Amen. When there was church, went to church. Yeah. And I thank God that I was drugged. Amen. Because my exposure to the preaching and the teaching and the prayers and the yeah. presence of God. It left an eternal imprint on my life. I began to see people that I knew were struggling. That they were fighting. It seemed like every devil in hell. He was coming against their families in every direction, every way possible. But because they had dug themselves a well. Because they had a prayer life. Amen. They were resilient and they could bounce back from in the face of adversity. Because of their walk with God, they could not be shaken. They could not be moved because their faith and confidence was in God and not in their adversity or situation. But unless you have a well, 
unless you have a prayer life, when the storm comes, amen, when the wind begins to blow, amen, when problems begin to rise, you don't necessarily have an anchor, amen, that you can throw over and hold you in place, amen. We've got to have a relationship with God that's unshakable, that's unmovable, that's steadfast. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This will time that I'm talking about tonight, amen, we often refer to it as our prayer closet time. I believe that there are times when, when we come together as members of the body of Christ when we need collective prayer. Amen. And we've got to pray together. We draw strength from that. Amen. When we bind together one mind, one spirit, and one accord. Amen. Great things can happen when we begin to bind together in prayer. Amen. In corporate prayer, praying together, the Holy Ghost can do just supernatural things. Amen. Powerful things. But you see... Amen. All of that is for naught. If we go home and we don't have a prayer life, right. Monday and Tuesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday. That's right. If I talk in tongues on Wednesday, amen, and I feel like I'm walking on the clouds because of the move of the Holy Ghost, but then I go home and I don't pray again until Sunday, it's all for naught. Amen. I believe what the Lord has impressed for me to share it with us tonight is we've got to learn to dig a well. Amen. You've got to dig it for yourself, sir. You've got to learn to dig it for yourself, ma'am. You've got to learn to dig it for yourself, young person. Your mom and dad can't do it for you. You've got to learn how to get a hold of God for yourself. You've got to learn, amen, how to call on the name of the Lord. Man, my dad was taken from this life at age 48 quickly, unexpectedly. Amen. We were at a funeral for a lady in the church that I went to when the phone call came into the pastor's office and we got the news. Amen. Can I tell us that all we have is right here and right now. We don't have a promise of tomorrow. And life can be gone in a blink of an eye. Last week, probably last Saturday, I was 18 years old. And I woke up and I was 40 years old, brother. And I don't know what happened. Boom. And they tell me it just seems to get faster and faster and faster. Amen. Amen. If you're ever going to have a relationship with God, don't wait until you're older. Don't wait until you're married or till you're through college or through high school or till you got a job. Make up your mind that you're going to do it now. You don't have a promise of tomorrow, but you can start digging a well tonight. And you can start making it a lifestyle choice, a priority in your life. You can start saying, you know what, I'm going to walk with God. I'm going to talk with God. I'm going to get a hold of the Holy Ghost, and I'm going to let the Holy Ghost get a hold of me. Amen. I want a real and lasting, genuine prayer life that's going to carry me through the good times and the bad times of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've got to have that closet prayer. We've got to have that closet prayer at home. Where you just kind of shut yourself in somewhere and you begin to talk to God about where you're living, what you're facing, what you're going through, what you're struggling with. Amen. About the load that you seem to be carrying. Amen. Jesus loves us more than we will ever know. His love is unconditional, it is boundless, it is timeless. Jesus gives us this invitation Come unto me, all you that are weary and are heaven laden. He gives the invitation. He says, I will give you rest. I will give you rest. I will give you rest. Amen. The Bible says, cast your cares upon him because he careth for you. Some things we carry, God never desired or intended for us to carry those things. He desires for us to make our way to an altar somewhere and lay it down at his feet and say, Jesus, I can't carry this. Can you take it for me? Amen. Lord, I need strength for the journey. Lord, I need strength, amen, to go another day. Amen. I need the help of the Holy Ghost 
in my life, Lord. Amen. Oh. Hallelujah. I'm going to close here in just a few minutes. I feel the Holy Ghost here tonight. Yes. Matthew chapter 14 and verses 22 and 23. Jesus gave us an example of prayer. You notice that the disciples never told Jesus, not one time that I can find, Jesus teach us how to cast out devils. Hey, Jesus, teach us how to cure the lepers. Teach us how to heal the sick. They watched him day after day after day as he would pray, as he would pray, God manifesting flesh, as he would pray. His prayer life was so powerful that it shook them. One day they said, Jesus, teach us to pray. Amen. Let that be our heartbeat in this place tonight. Jesus, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray, Lord. Teach us to pray. Matthew says, in straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him and to the other side, and he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Sometimes when you pray, you got to get off by yourself, sister. You got to get away from everybody else so that you can get a hold of God. You got to lay aside the digital distractions so that you can hear from God. Amen. You got to shut yourself in with him. Amen. Amen. I believe that before we come apart, we've got to learn to come apart. For a man, the anxiety and the fear and the stress and the cares of this life crush us and weigh us down. We've got to learn to call on the name of the Lord somewhere. Would you stand with me all across this place tonight? I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're struggling with. I don't know anything about anything. It doesn't take much to look at me and know that. But I have a God whose name is Jesus. And he loves you more than you will ever know. And he is for you and not against you. And I believe that the Lord has impressed on me to tell us this tonight. I'm preaching to me and everybody here. Dig a well. Dig a well. And defend that well at all costs. Don't let anybody or anything steal away your time with the Lord. Make prayer a priority. Say it's that important to me to get into the presence of Jesus. I've got to get a hold of God. It's for my survivability. It's where I draw my strength. It's where I draw my joy. It's where I draw my help. Because the struggle is real. And the weight is heavy. And the journey is long. But there's help for the journey. In the presence of God. In the presence of God, you can get everything that you need to face any adversity. Any battle in any situation. The Bible tells us if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves. See, prayer is about humbling ourselves. It's realizing, Lord, who is sufficient for these things? Not me. I can't handle it on my own, God. I can't do this all by myself. I've got to have your help, Lord. I've got to have the strength and the help of the Holy Ghost, Lord. And I can find it in the presence of God. I want to give this invitation. Amen. If you want to stay where you are, if you want to come forward to pray. I just wonder if there's someone in this place tonight that would just like to come and tell the Lord. From this night on, Lord, I'm going to start digging a well. I'm going to start making prayer the priority in my life. Get him in your presence, Lord, abiding in you. It's that important to me, Lord. It's that important to me, Lord. Can we lift our hands all across this house as they begin to sing? Amen. If you'd like to come and pray, these altars are open. If you'd like to come and talk to the Lord.